Imagine you're about to beat the final boss in a game. And when you do, the coins pop out in a satisfying way, but the final jewel pops out like that. All right, ho hold that in your memory for a second. Let's, let me show you another one. Now we're about to beat the final boss again, and the jewel pops out like that. Tell me, which one would you prefer? Hello YouTube, I'm Arn Peter, and if you picked the first one, then you're watching the wrong tutorial. Because in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to make a satisfying pop-in animation like we did in the second one. And along the way, I'll be introducing you to Animation Curves, which is a super powerful concept in Game Maker. You can make a lot of cool effects with it. Here is our starting project. Uh, for the most part, we have just enough assets to have some pretty tiles on the room, like sprites-wise, some tiles, and then we have a room with some tiles set up. For as far as instances, I just have this control object. So let me walk you through that. I only have two objects, and all the control object does is it will make one of the jewel objects whenever you click. Then uh, we have an empty jewel object. And you can see that in action here, and how it kind of demonstrates the very plain, kind of just spawning in aspect. So I'm going to go ahead and make an animation curve next to co correspond with that nice spawning in animation that you saw. So I'm going to assume this is your first time using animation curves, so I'm going to kind of step through it like step by step. So we're going to go ahead and right click, create a new animation curve, and then here we get to essentially make a line, a curve, illustrating how the scale changes over time. So along the x-axis from here from 0 to 1, that represents time. And if I expand the curve here, I can see these two points represented here. So this is horizontal zero, vertical zero for the, fir for the first point. And the second point is horizontal one, because it's all the way on the right side. And again, V zero for the second point. And we actually want to change this to one, meaning that we start at a scale of zero and end at a scale of one. And you can change them in here, or you can change them uh, up here. Um, so that's where we want to, how we want to start thinking about this, starting at zero, going to one, and then we can add intermediate points. So what I actually want to do is add an intermediate point about here, and then I want to go above one for for a little bit. I want to go aim towards one, overshoot, and then undershoot, and then end up at one. So I don't actually have enough space to go above one right now, so I need to hit this button right here to increase my range. So we don't actually want to ever go below zero, so I think it gets it lower to zero. And then I'll set the upper to two. And if you need more, of course, you can adjust it accordingly. So now we have enough space to make the first one go above, make the second one go a little bit below. And that's essentially our whole animation curve. It'll go like whoop, whoop, something like that. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So uh, this is what we'll use to start with. Um, pretty easy. All right, let's get started on implementing this. So I'm going to go into the jewel and go into the create event of the jewel. And here I'm going to need to set a few variables. First off, I'm going to set the x scale and the y scale to 0. Then I'm also going to create a new variable called cx and set that to 0. cx is going to represent our x along the curve. So that's the convention I'm going to be using for that. And then the last variable I'm going to create is the spawn seconds variable. I'm going to set that equal to 1. So this represents how long I want the animation to take. And this will be pretty easy to tweak as we go to make it feel just right. So now I'm going to go into the step event, and we can start using the animation curve functions. So those are anim curve. And even though there's a lot of options, we don't need to worry too much about it, because if you're creating it within GameMaker, if you're creating the resource right here, as opposed to creating it during um, the runtime of your game, then you only need two of these. You only need the get channel, and you need the channel evaluate. Those are the only two you need. So I'm going to go ahead and add semicolons here, and then talk about it. Channel is a new word for us. Let me just go and talk about what that means. So if we go into our animation curve, you can see that you can hit this plus button to add more sub animation curves. And then you can do whatever you want with them. These are called channels. You could do a lot of cool stuff with them. However, I won't be doing that today. You can check out some of my other tutorials to see what you can do with multiple channels. So I'm going to go and delete them. And then while I'm here, I'm going to do some renaming. So I can rename the channel just by double clicking here or pressing F2. 
I'm just going to call it only channel or something just to show that you can rename it, but this isn't really going to matter too much as you'll see soon. And I'm going to name the animation curve itself and spawn. Now let's go back into the jewel and let's fill in the parameters for these functions. So the first parameter for get channel is the animation curve. Second is the channel. And we could do only channel or whatever we named it like that. However, since there's only one of them, I tend to just not keep track of the name and just do zero, meaning whatever the first one is. If you end up with multiple, it's, it's cleaner to name them, in my opinion, but if you just have one, then I'd just rather do zero. All right, so that'll give us the channel, so I'm going to store that in this little ch variable. Then we can move on to the next one, channel evaluate. Here we can pass in a channel and an x position, and it'll give us the corresponding y position along the animation curve. So we'll do ch for the channel, cx for the x position on the curve. So CY is going to be the output of that. All right, now that we have CY, we can use that and apply it to our image X and Y scales. All righty. So next, for this to actually animate, we need CX to continuously increase from 0 to 1. And this has been such a common use case across all my animation curve tutorials that I wrote a script specifically for it. And here it is. So this takes in a current value, a target value, and then a step, and it just returns a new value which is most of the time it's just the current with the step added so that's closer to the target but this handles the script handles some more edge cases like if the target is below the current it'll step downwards or if the current is very close to the target this script will make sure we don't overstep so I'm just going to copy that and make a new script and there we go now we should be able to call that function from our jewel and there we have it so our current value is CX. We want our CX to step towards 1, and we want to step towards it by this step amount. And this is a little bit more involved. So if we look at spawn seconds, which is 1, uh, we need to convert this to number of steps. So that would be 1 times room speed, which room speed for me is 30. So here we want to travel a total distance of 1, which is you know from 0 to 1. So if that's the distance you're traveling and you want to get there in 30 steps, then it makes sense that you want to step by 1 30th every time. All right, I think we're set to test this out. Okay, moment of truth. Look at that. All right, awesome. So this story looks really good, but there's some more ways we can improve it. You can see that it looks a little bit robotic. It's like, do 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 We can uh, make some changes to make it look a lot smoother. So let me go ahead and jump back into the curve and spawn. And then let me kind of tell you about this button up here, this little hidden button, curve type. So we chose linear, which means it connects the dots using straight lines. But if we use smooth, we can make it look a lot better, smoother. And let me just go ahead and tell you about the third one while I'm here. The third one is called Bezier, which is like smooth, but it gives you even more control, where I can hover over the points, or I think I can hover over the points, yeah. If I click it, you can see it gives me these lines where I can very, very accurately control how, how to make the Bezier curve. That's not exa exactly what I want, like smoothing it usually works for me, but you can have Bezier if you want to have even more control. Hi, it's me from the future. After recording and editing and actually uploading this tutorial, I realized that the next version of GameMaker is going to have some updates to their animation curves. So I wanted to add this quick little snippet to show you what changes will be made in the latest version of Game Maker 2.3.2 since um, most of you will be watching in the future and most of you will probably have access to this. I'm going to go ahead and make an animation curve right here in the Game Maker beta environment and the change they made is if you go into Bezier mode right now they have all these presets you can use which are really handy like most of my tutorials can just straight up use one of these presets and it'll work just fine. So the way you use it is first you do have to set a starting and ending point so I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. Just a straight line. And then I can use one of these presets to kind of fill in the space in between. So like here I can use cubic to go fast, slow. And I could of course do any of these. Right now it matches the preview pretty well where you can see it goes up and then slows down. However, uh, don't get too confused by it because it won't always do that. So like if I if I start over and if I if I decide to make the second point down it looks a little more confusing because you can see here I have over cubic it goes up and slows down so now it kind of is the mirrored version of that so just note that this preview kind of represents 
how quickly it's changing, but ultimately it's going from your starting point to your target, and if your starting point to your target is below, it's gonna be mirrored. I was talking about starting fast, ending slow. That actually can be adjusted as well, and the reason it's doing that is because we have it set to ease out right now, so e slowing at the out part, easing at the out part. So we can change that to ease in, and then I can click over here again to uh, apply it. So pretty neat. And then of course they have ease out and ease in, where slow, fast, slow. So that's how you can do that. That is most of the features. I also want to explain these buttons up here. So this one says it overwrites the section. So you can see some of these add more control points. And then if I switch, have something with control points and I switch to something that doesn't have control points, it will overwrite those control points. But if I, let's say I go to one of the ones that adds more control points, and, and then I use this mode, if I apply other things from there, it'll act, it'll apply the curve to each of the subsections and that gets hairy really fast. <laughs> Might even crash my program by clicking this too much. So let me um, delete this. Oh, nope, my program's frozen. Ah, lovely. But that's to be expected working in beta. And uh, just be careful with that mode. Let me just restart this. Okay, I'm back. So the last thing I wanted to mention is that let's say you have multiple points like so. Um, you can actually pre-select which section you want to adjust. So let's say you only want to adjust this section. I would click the first point in there and then you can see when I go into this mode it only selects that section. So I can just edit the one section and change that to linear for example. So if I was redoing this tutorial using the Bezier mode, I would probably just set this from 0 to 1, um, like so. And then when if I go into Bezier mode, I would actually just use the bouncy, sorry, elastic preset. And that pretty much matches what we want to do. So that's all you need to do. So there's one other feature I wanted to m mention. And this is uh, not actually related to the 2.3.2 update. It's actually something that was already in the Bezier curve mode that I just didn't know about. So if I go, am in Bezier, Bezier mode, usually these two control points are forced to be in a straight line from each other, which forces the um, slope at this key point to be smooth. And usually that's what you want, but sometimes it's not what you want. Um, so if you want these to not be in a line, you can hold down Alt, and then you can see I can adjust these individually. So that's candy for some specific scenarios, and you can see I can make like a little more of an interesting curve there. So yeah, uh, that's all for this little 2.3.2 insertion. Uh, back to the tutorial. Like smoothing, it usually works for me, but you can have Bezier if you want to have even more control. Um, so let's see how it looks with smoothing. There we go. So now instead of da, 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 it's more like there we go. Very cool. All right, that is the tutorial. We just use animation curves to make our spawn and animation look so much more organic and fun to look at and you know having things that are fun to look at and feel good to to receive is really important for games we need to give our players that dopamine hit so that they want to keep playing and that they enjoy the experience and you know if they do something hard they should feel good about completing it and overcoming it that's all for this tutorial but i wanted to go ahead and mention before you leave that uh, this is actually going to be the first video in a series. I think animation curves are really cool. They're probably my favorite feature in the two Game Maker 2.3 release. And there's tons of applications for it. So to give you an idea of all the different ways you can use it, I wanted to make this series where I use it in a bunch of ways. So I'm starting with this basic platformer game that I made in a separate tutorial series. And I'm going to just pack in as many animation curves as I can. Another thing I thought would be fun to do in this series is talk about animation principles. So this doesn't feel like super creative, it still feels pretty technical, we're like creating this line with an x and y axis, but it actually does feel kind of creative in a way that you can um, have a lot of control over how your animations look, and some very real animation theory can come into this. So every aspiring animator, one of the first things they learn is the 12 animation principles. So at the end of each of these videos, I'm going to pick one of them that seems relevant and talk about it a bit. So today's animation principle is called straight ahead versus pose to pose. 
I will be linking to Alan Becker's excellent series going through these for more information, but to give you a basic idea, um, these two techniques talk about different ways to set your keyframes. Straight ahead is where you add them as you go from left to right, like so. And then pose to pose is where you start out doing the beginning and the end as your first two points. And then you add some more in between to get your general shape. And then you can do like a third pass where you add some more details. So for the most part, you'll want to use pose to pose because it makes sure that you end up at the correct destination and that the curve looks the way you want as you go. Uh, however, there's some specific cases where you might want to use straight ahead. And Alan Becker gets into those points in his excellent video. So I hope you check that out. And for as far as the tutorial series goes, I hope to see you in more of the animation curve tutorials. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.